Chapter 9. Schooling is not education. The world has changed, but the school system has not changed with it. Students spend many years in an obsolete system studying subjects they may never use and preparing for a world which no longer exists. The school system offers a one-size-fits-all academic curriculum that doesn't work for everybody. There isn't much on offer with the school system for a curious mind or someone who yearns for something different. Schools are more about passing tests, exams, and less about learning. The school system teaches different minds the same things. The school system only prepares people for jobs and not life. Schooling is more about memorization, standardization, and conformity. Hence, Albert Einstein said, If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. The school system doesn't pursue tapping into pupils' natural abilities, and that's where it has missed its effective mark. The school curriculum should be honing the creative and analytical ability of young minds. Schooling prepares you for what society expects you to be. The school system programs students not to fail. If they do fail, they are punished, criticized, and even ostracized. One of the greatest disadvantages to this programming is that it leaves graduates keep towing around opportunities in the real world due to their fear of failure. In an effort to avoid failure, students play it safe and avoid risk. And in so doing, many are sleepwalking through life. No matter what you may have been told, school is not education. Education is about growing an ability to learn, to think, to understand, to do, and to take action. Education is about preparing yourself for life and for who you wish to become. Education is not synonymous with schooling. Schooling is done in school, but education can happen anywhere. Education can happen without schooling, and schooling can also happen without education. School teaches you what to think, but education teaches you how to think. Never mistake getting a certificate for getting an education. Education is what you learn after you leave school. A lot of us assume we've been educated because we attended college or some prestigious university. There are so many uneducated graduates in our world today. The school system is obsessed with producing college graduates, perfect job candidates with impressive CVs, rather than thinking human beings. But now more than ever before, the school system needs to be revamped to adapt to the needs of the new economic paradigm and future job markets by focusing more on the creative skills of the young mind from an early age. School needs to prepare pupils for a world where humans, robots, and AI will work together. Jobs of the future will use different skills and higher creativity. But the way the school system is currently structured is out of step in a world where technology is changing so rapidly. With the current education system, we might end up leaving a lot of people behind. Since the school system is failing, Parents also have the responsibility to point their children in the right direction. Graduates will have to disrupt the status quo and upgrade their skills to battle the impact of automation. Many will have to train themselves to become entrepreneurs. We are at a point in history where we need to put the focus on self-education and tapping into students' natural abilities instead of just acquiring certificates. The world belongs to thinkers, creatives, and learners. The future is more creative and self-reliant. As a graduate, don't rely only on your certificate. Now is the time to educate yourself. Learn new skills, grow, improve, and reinvent yourself. Futurist and philosopher Elvin Toffler once wrote, The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Become the master of your own education and bring yourself up to speed with the current world order. As Mark Twain said, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. The focus should be on getting an education, not just certificates. Education happens almost every day. Education can happen as soon as you read this book, or watch an iconic movie, or listen to an enlightening podcast, or attend some seminar, workshop, or training. There is really no formula for getting educated, but there are plenty of formulas for getting a certificate and that's where most of the world tends to follow. So much so that 
Those without certificates often feel like outcasts. Some even end up destroying themselves on the basis of I have no certificate. So, I am not smart. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against schooling and acquiring certificates. Schooling is very essential. It teaches us language, facts, history, figures, grammar, and how to read and write. Schooling teaches the kind of basics that you need to exist in your everyday life as an adult. In fact, I advise everyone to have some sort of basic schooling. However, it's not a death sentence if one lacks even these basics. There is more to life than the classroom, textbooks, lectures, exams, and certificates. The mental and emotional damage done by the school system can sometimes last a lifetime. Although most people do wake up at some point, some of the mental slavery caused by the system is direct and some is indirect. Everyone is prepared for the job market. An accounting degree is offered to students with a mindset to count someone else's money, not their own. A business management degree is offered to those with a mindset to manage someone else's business, not their own. An auditing degree is for those with a mindset to audit someone else's company, not their own. Even an IT or engineering degree is given so you can solve someone else's technical problems, not your own. You can test what I'm saying by typing benefits of a business degree on Google search or any degree that comes to your mind and you'll discover that nearly all results are related to you having better job opportunities. Some people went to school and came back with only certificates, no education at all. If what the school system offered cannot be applied to solve societal problems or personal problems, then education did not take place. If what the school system offered cannot instigate change in your personal life, then education did not take place. If what the school system offered cannot help you stand on your own two feet, then education did not take place. If what the school system offers is only for graduates to gather certificates that can't lead anywhere other than a job, then education did not take place. You are not educated if all you got from school is a certificate. An academic qualification is only a piece of paper until you can channel it and employ it or leverage it beyond the scope of the school syllabus and societal norms. You need to be able to disrupt the status quo and use your academic know-how for your own personal benefit. It is a criminal offense against your brain to sit on your IT or engineering certificate only waiting for a job. Real education should help solve problems, if not your country's problems, then, at the very least, your own. The school system should create solution finders, innovators, and disruptors. The school system should create assets to society not liabilities waiting for government, families, and friends to rescue them. Are you educated or just certificated? No matter how many degrees you have, if you cannot create value for yourself by innovating or modifying your life, ain't you the same as the illiterates, maybe even worse? What is the point of having a degree if you don't possess any added advantage in the real world over someone who never went to school? A degree is just a degree. It doesn't put food on the table just by its existence with your name on it. Don't let your brain rot simply because you have a degree or whatever higher certificate of learning you've got hanging on your wall. The world doesn't pay you for what you know. The world pays you for what you can do with what you know. You are yet to catch up with the real world if you've never studied any concepts outside the school syllabus or read any books besides the textbooks school forced you to read. Most people are merely programmed, not educated. You are not qualified to address the world's problems and challenges if you have no degree from the University of Life. Academic Excellence versus Real Life The real tragedy of the school system is that academic excellence is the only target. From childhood, We are programmed to believe that by scoring higher mark, we'll have a brighter future and be more likely to succeed in life. Teachers, parents, caregivers, and children alike are obsessed with high marks, thereby achieving this academic excellence. The idea of stressing creativity and nurturing growing minds 
is thrown out the window and the memorizing of information is embraced. And then information is mistaken for knowledge. The obsession with this faulty idea of excellence goes beyond the, the classroom. Even into the job environment where employees are more focused on achieving results than being creative and innovative. Sadly, this type of excellence is usually achieved by throwing your brains in the dustbin and following rules to the core. Many of us have experienced the rude awakening that mere academic achievement, in other words, the amassing of a whole star room of information or being employee of the week does not necessarily guarantee success, wealth or personal fulfillment. For those who are still in school, Never limit yourself to the classroom. Continue to learn wherever you are. Practice being creative. Exercise those other parts of you, other skills and talents that the classroom doesn't touch. Life doesn't really respect certificates. Real empowerment and fulfillment lie in self-education. While school rewards people for their caution and ability to memorize, life rewards people for their imagination, creativity and daring. Life requires much more than your ability to understand a concept, memorize it, and reproduce it in an exam. Intelligence and excellence in life go beyond your ability to provide cut-and-paste answers. The concept of nurturing a child's natural abilities is threatened with extinction under the current school system. Life skills are vitally important. A riveting story is told of a student by the name of Devin Gaines who earned five bachelor degrees simultaneously at the University of Connecticut in 2002 to 2007. He averaged 24 credits per semester and three hours of sleep per night. He drowned in 2007 because he didn't know how to swim. Professor Abel Toss, head of fear from the University of Ghana, had this to say, Academic excellence is overrated. Being top of your class does not necessarily guarantee that you will be top in life. You could graduate as the best student in finance, but it doesn't mean you will make more money than everybody else. Best law students do not always become the best lawyers in the real world. Who celebrates those who live by the rules? Life celebrates those who break the rules and set new ones. The most powerful certificate you have is your mind. Use it to create your own reality. Think less of becoming an excellent student or an excellent employee. Rather think more about becoming an excellent person. No matter what you major in at the university, there will always be lessons that can only be learned in the university of life. If you can learn new skills and try new things even while still in a formal school, you'll be more than well prepared for the world outside of college. You'll be mentally ahead of your peers. New skills mean more earning power because money grows on skills, not trees. Am I discouraging people from achieving higher smocks? Certainly not. You definitely should score with distinctions. But don't sacrifice everything on the altar of certificates or high marks. Don't limit yourself to the classroom. Do something that makes your heart tick. Do something practical. Learn new skills. Join a club or start a club. Take a leadership position. Enter a contest even if you lose. Write a book. Start a blog or write articles about a subject close to your heart. Go into entrepreneurship. Try something new. Try art. Try politics. Try agriculture. Break rules. Be disruptive and innovative. Doing practical things will teach you more about life and yourself than any certificate could ever teach you. Start a business even if it fails. The experience will teach you more about business than a business degree. In an era of technological advancement, it goes without saying, you cannot survive only on what the school curriculum taught you. You have the responsibility to recreate yourself. You have the responsibility to be globally and digitally oriented with the mindset to solve global problems, contribute to the economy and create your own work. Don't turn the classroom into your world, but turn the world into your classroom. Academic excellence is not everything. It is your gifts, talents and skills that will make room for you and bring you before great men. Some of the damage done to the mind by the system is that the school system creates entitlement and promotes lazy thinking. When students are in school, they are entitled 
to all sorts of allowances, either from family members, the government, or whatever institution is sponsoring them. This is not entirely a bad thing. Even students have to eat. But beware of the adverse results of entitlement. Students are entitled to a textbook allowance, food allowance, clothing allowance, entertainment allowance, airtime allowance, emergency allowances, medical allowances, and even dating allowances. All these are good, but students need to understand there are no allowances in the real world. All too often, allowances offer comfort and shield the mind from creative thinking. When students complete their studies, they find it hard to cope in the real world without allowances, hence the relentless pursuit of a job which replaces allowances and keeps the monthly juices flowing, surely. As successful students, they are entitled to a job. There's that old entitlement again. That's why very few graduates attempt to get into business. There might be no allowances or even a steady monthly salary for a couple of years. That's too daunting for people who have been dependent on allowances. So employment is chosen above the risk of starting a business. As an employee, at least, you have some financial reward every 30 days. This 30 days reward is very alluring. So much so that when some graduates fail to get a job, they resort to going back to university for a second or even a third degree. Have you ever wondered why, every so often, students stage protests against the readmissions policy of institutions which prevents students who fail from staying on campus indefinitely. They protest because they'd rather stay in school and have allowances than face the pain of the real world without a job. Since they are afraid to hustle and fend for themselves, staying in school is a perfect cover. I think I can now safely say that as a student, you should check on the people around you to see if they are really in school for the purpose of gaining knowledge or for the purpose of escaping real life. Pain is actually a good thing. I'll show you in chapter 10 that life isn't about avoiding the bruises, but about collecting the scars to prove you showed up for it. If the next generation of graduates is going to be entrepreneurial or adequately qualified for jobs of the future, then the school system must start preparing them now for a different kind of excellence, both in the academics, life, the workplace, and the business world. The Department of Education, from preschool, and primary right up to the university, needs new systems of learning that include what to learn, how to learn, how to think creatively, and how to prepare for the radical shift that is rapidly approaching in the new economic era. But instead of waiting for the education system to change, you can't upskill yourself. You can gain relevant skills and recreate yourself through platforms like Khan Academy, Udemy, MOOC, EDX, Code Academy, Coursera, FutureLearn, and other online courses that are profoundly transforming the process of learning for all ages. These decentralized online learning platforms combined with mentors and your own self-education can empower, transform, and prepare you for opportunities in tomorrow's world. The Unconventional Success Story of Idris Sandhu Meet Idris Sandhu, born and raised in California by his Ghanaian parents. The 21-year-old and conventional tech guru has accomplished many incredible feats, including being responsible for algorithms that have made Uber, Instagram, and Snapchat what they are today. The award-winning innovator is the best example of the power of nurturing one's talents instead of only focusing on academic excellence and certificates. He started learning programming at the age of 10 on his own at a public library for two years, and this was where he was spotted by a designer from Google. He offered him an internship opportunity at Google's headquarters. At only age 13, he worked on many projects such as the initial Google Blogger, Google Plus, among others. Idris Sandhu then went on to develop mobile software that gained the attention of former U.S. President Barack Obama and landed him at the White House, where he received the Honorary Presidential Scholar Award at age 16 while still in high school. At age 18, Sandhu wrote an algorithm that he would go on to sell to Instagram while he was already consulting for Snapchat before landing at Uber, where he created a software package 
for its self-driving cars. Now at age 21, Idris has built an impressive resume using his creativity and talent to work with prominent companies, artists, and professionals implementing his future-proof qualities into his projects. The wireless charging table, the smart store collaboration with the late Nipsey Hussle, Project Li-Fi, Project ACDI, Uber self-driving cars, Kira, a new intelligent personal assistance system, Iris Scan Technology, AIPE, Advanced Imaging Processing Experience, are a few of his personal favorites. According to reports, Idris has 140 IQ that places him among the top rank with some of the world's greatest minds. He plans to change the world through design, culture, and technology. He is revolutionizing the way technology is created and used. His position right now is so relevant because he's able to over-index both worlds to create even more of an impact, says Gary Vaynerchuk, author and speaker. Idris's unique talents have given him the opportunity to sit as lead technical consultant for Kanye West, singer and rapper. He's also collaborating with Jaden Smith to create an augmented reality experience around music. He launched an immersive store with hip-hop artist Nipsey Hussle, and he has great names like NBA star Steph Curry and Tesla CEO Elon Musk on speed dial. Idris's story is one that speaks to young people all over the world about being disruptive, self-reliant, informed, and unconventional. He recently delivered a TED Talk aimed at providing youths with the exposure they need to create their own futures, and he'll also be lecturing at Stanford University. Idris's main focus areas are architecture and design and cultural empowerment through technology. He has a passion for community development and to inculcate into young people the need for invention and creativity. But above all, he wants to level the playing field between Silicon Valley and young people of color. Idris says he was twice offered admissions to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, but he declined it in order to be a change agent for African American culture. He's a visionary equipped with the virtual reality glasses it takes these days to see into the future. The parenting story of Asim Qureshi on homeschooling his children. Asim Qureshi, CEO of Jebel Group and Launchpad, blogs on www.wonderyearschool.com about homeschooling his children. On one of his blogs, he writes, My kids are socially fine and more confident than most average school kids. They can speak five languages and are learning more. The two older kids can understand a balance sheet. My son is learning to program to make his own app. He plays football at around state level and is one of the fastest runners for his age over five kilometers in the country. I believe homeschooling has been a key reason for all his achievements. All my kids are done with the exams at 18 years. They'll spend 6 to 12 months working for tech startups to get some work and real life experience. From this point, they will be pretty much financially independent. I'll invest $20,000 in any startup they want to do. They'll probably work together on one venture. If they blow it, they have a few more rounds. It's a lot of money I know, but it's a worthwhile investment. Even if they lose it all, it's still way cheaper and better than university fees and degrees. I'm hoping that they'll be millionaires before they hit 25. I'm confident they'll do well because I'm mentoring them. But if business isn't for them, it wouldn't be too late for them to take the university route. But I'm hoping things won't get to the point of them choosing a university. Asim Qureshi says, Am I forcing them to do this? No, not at all. I'm simply showing them both sides of the coin. I'm encouraging them in the same way 99% of parents encourage their kids to go to university and get a degree. My children have the free will and choice to do whatever they want. But as it stands, they're brimming with ideas already about business and the future, and they can't wait to be let loose. The journey is theirs, not mine. 
Not having a degree will mean they can't sit back and rest on any laurels or government promises. They'll have nothing to fall back on than to get out there and fight for their future, which to me is more important than any degree. I want my kids to be fearless when it comes to entrepreneurship and risk-taking. And this will be their reality for the moment they decide not to get a degree. I'm giving my kids what I believe to be the most valuable skills for the future. I'm giving my kids what I believe to be the most valuable skills for the future. I pull them out of mainstream school and their learning with relevant teachers and materials from home, instead of learning things that most likely won't be applied directly to their lives. Like advanced molecular biology, chemistry, history, and so on. They're acquiring creative and relevant skills that will be useful to them from the word go and into the future. The following are some of the things that seem Quraysh's children are learning. Languages. They're learning spoken Mandarin, Hindu, Adu, French, Malay, Arabic, and English, of course. Numeracy. My kids have gone way too far in what's actually useful and needed in being able to do the basics well. They can work out 35% of 350 in their heads fairly quickly and so, to me, they are numerate enough. Coding. My two elder kids, 12 and 14, spend around two hours a day learning to code, Python. Well, I tell them two hours a day is not enough. Public speaking and debating. My 14-year-old regularly attends public speaking classes. Team skills. Through group activities or sports. Social skills. Being able to mix well with different people so I ensure my kids meet other kids and people of different ages and backgrounds regularly. Sales. I've asked my kids to sell $10,000 worth of t-shirts which I have left over from a failed business venture. Sales is a key skill in any career. You need to sell yourself even in a job interview. Social media. Writing and marketing. I'm lumping these together because I see them all as knowing how to get out there, relate and communicate well online, which is why I encourage my daughter, Mayram Qureshi, to write and share her thoughts on Quora. Invest in your mind. Read to lead. Everyone is so obsessed with their physical bodies and looks. Go on a diet. Get the best weight loss program. Join the gym. Get a personal trainer. Get the best anti-aging cream. Eat healthy. Eat organic food. Drink lots of water. Eat lots of fruit and vegetables and so on. Some keep up with the Kardashians and fashion trends. Some upgrade their phones, their computers and their apps. Yet most forget to upgrade the most important thing, the mind. The burning question is, why don't we take our minds as seriously as we take our gadgets and physical bodies? Some people have never bought a book of any genre apart from textbooks the schools force them to buy. We invest a lot in our physical bodies. We are on special diets, yet our minds are starving. We are in our heads all day long, every moment of every second of our lives, but we give little to no attention to our minds. It is your personal responsibility to feed your mind with the right content and teach your head how to deal with life. The right mindset gives you the unique ability to see beyond what already exists and to handle whatever life throws at you. You can grow your success margin, experience happiness and fulfillment, expand the horizon and discover great possibilities for yourself. And some of these discoveries are to be found in books. Some people own 21st century gadgets yet have a mindset from the 17th century. I applaud you if you've read Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted to this point. It shows great commitment that you are on a mission to disrupt the status quo. It is my greatest desire that you'll find jewels and nuggets in this book that will change your life and contribute greatly towards your journey and overall success. I still remember vividly the first time I got my hands on some personal development materials. It was a YouTube video. I was baffled, but in a good way. At that very moment, I realized that my fate was not set in stone. I could become my own drill master and coach. I realized that what I watched, read, and listened to could set me out on a different course than the one I was on 
or was familiar with. I quickly switched from sitting back and waiting on a miracle to active involvement in my own life. Until that point, I didn't really understand that I was responsible for my own success or failure. I thought someone, something, some organization, my family, some corporate entity, or even the government were responsible for how my life turned out. Never underestimate the impact the good book can have on your life and destiny. As Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States, once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. However, be careful what you invest your mind. Some people buy porn, nude magazines, gossip magazines and newspapers. These are also investments, but not the kind that can empower or position you as a leader. Watching porn, reading all the gossip in your community, watching all the propaganda on TV, reading all the abuse, killings, wars and atrocities in newspapers will leave you feeling helpless, hopeless, angry and depressed instead of feeling in charge and powerful. You can't transform your thinking, performance, behavior and emotional state by changing what goes into your mind. Don't feed your mind with junk content and expect to be mentally and emotionally healthy. I've discovered through my own personal evolution as well as studying successful people that if you want to get ahead in life, you must invest in your mind. Read as many books as you can. Never underestimate the long-term impact of compound knowledge. It's not about randomly reading anything. You have to be strategic, cautious and specific when working out your mind diet program. Personally, I invest time into educating myself either via books, articles, video courses, seminars or webinars. Successful people read books that are educational, books on leadership, business, negotiation, love, parenting, interpersonal relationships, conflict management, technology, personal development and much more. Successful people particularly obsess over biographies and autobiographies of other successful people for guidance and inspiration. Average and poor people, on the other hand, read gossip magazines, fashion magazines, romans, newspapers, novels. They also listen to lots of music and watch lots of TV. However, if you are of the latter, change is possible. You can start today. You can handpick great personal development books, autobiographies, leadership books, as well as great articles online and empowering videos on YouTube that will accelerate your life to the next level. They will ignite fire within you and inspire you to become more than you are now. You cannot neglect your mind if you really want to grow. Wisdom and great discoveries lie in books. Make time each day to read something that's educational even if it's only a paragraph. Expose your mind to something different than what the media constantly feeds you. Little advances in your knowledge can lead to quantum improvements in your life over time. If you don't program your mind, it will be programmed for you. The media has its own agenda, and so should you. As a leader and pioneer of the future, be intentional with your every move. Pick books that truly interest you. Don't just read them. Master them, dissect their contents, and implement their wisdom into your life. Allow the wisdom in books to transform you, and you'll be amazed at how incredibly powerful the impact of just one book can be. Therefore, go on, consume everything you can about life, success, relationships, business, and leadership from great minds you admire. New reports reveal that Bill Gates reads about 50 books a year, which breaks down to one book per week. While some people wait for the release of the next movie, great people like Mr. Gates wait for the release of the next great book. You may wonder, why would a man who held the position of world's richest man for 18 years spend so much time leafing through pages? The answer is simple. A rich mind equals a rich life. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. In an interview with Catherine Rosman, of the New York Times, Bill Gates explained that reading had always been one of the chief ways that he learned things. These days, I also get to visit interesting places, meet with scientists, and watch a lot of lectures online. But reading is still the main way that I learn new things and test my understanding of life. As Charles William Eliot, 
an American academic who wrote a book called The Durable Satisfactions of Life said, Books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are the most accessible and wisest of counselors and the most patient of teachers. One habit successful people have in common is that they all read a lot. Many of the great minds in the world today say they owe their success to reading, investing in their minds. The following business leaders and entrepreneurs make reading a major part of their daily lifestyle. Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, was once asked about the key to success and he pointed to a stack of nearby books and said, Read 500 pages like this every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up like compound interest. Warren Buffett has been quoted as the undisputed king of reading. Elon Musk A business magnate often referred to as the greatest entrepreneur of the 21st century is an avid reader. When asked in an interview how he learned to build rockets, he said, I read books. Mark Zuckerberg The undisputed king of social networking resolved to reading a book every two weeks. Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Group, a tie-loathing adventurer, thrill-seeker and self-made billionaire, believes that to nurture a healthy growth mindset, it is necessary to read great leadership books. How Reading Changed My Life The Story of Charles Chu It was December 2014. I'd found my dream job. Some days, I would be there, sitting at my dream job and thinking to myself, My God, what if I'm still here in 40 years? I don't want to die like this. Something wasn't right. I'd followed the prescription, go to school, get good grades, and get a dream job. I was a winner. I'd finished the race. Here I was in the land of dreams. But something was terribly, terribly wrong. Every day, from my dream job desk, I'd look into the eyes of my colleagues for answers. Most of them were empty, empty eyes. There were no answers. In January 2015, I found Warren Buffett's quote about him reading 500 pages. I decided to read. I was going to read and read and read and never stop until I got some damn answers. I didn't quite make 500 pages a day, but in two years, I read over 400 books cover to cover. That decision to start reading was one of the most important decisions in my life. Books gave me the courage to travel. Books gave me the conviction to quit my job. Books gave me role models and heroes and meaning in a world where I had none. Instead of relying on strength of mind, I built a fortress of habits. One game-changing idea from a good book is worth thousands of dollars. If I hadn't started reading, perhaps I'd still be at my dream job. Perhaps I'd still be at my desk, taking peeks at the clock and wondering if that was how I was going to die. Chapter 